Hello there, my bow fishing brethren. Uh, night, a nice bow fishing night on uh, May 27, 2020, up in Saginaw Bay, Michigan. Uh, it was a little quick run out there. Uh, the weatherman was a little off on their uh, wind direction and their wind speed, but I drive about an hour and 40 minutes to get to this spot, so when I'm there, I'm going to be there. Uh, Ended up being a pretty nice night. I did manage to shoot some fish. The uh, the spawn activity, is, this is post-spawn, and uh, a lot of it really uh, slowed things down here uh, with a uh, um, with the change in the uh, temperatures and the wind. You know, one of the things I carry up on deck there is a uh, gaff um, that allows me to uh, not only gaff fish easily, but to pull large masses of uh, uh, seaweed and crap off of my uh, trolling motor. I came up with a PVC system which has a slot cut through the side of it that allows the uh, gaff to slide down into it and come out of it easily. My GoPro camera ses settings are as listed above. Right there, what you've seen is me turn on the uh, arrow LED lights. There's two in the front and two on the sides. The lights before that were Volgrums. So now I have the Volgrums and the arrows running. I like this because it allows me to adjust the amount of light for the condition that I'm using. You know, the camera angle you see right here is uh, mounted on a 8 foot long 1 inch aluminum square tube and I'm using an external battery to help power my camera. Uh, you can use any type of external power device, uh, you just have to cut a little hole in the uh, camera case that holds the uh, GoPro camera. This is probably tipped back at about a 15 degree angle. At the top of my bow, I end up zip tying a water activated strobe light. Uh, these things can be inexpensive, anywhere between $5 and $15, but by God, if you dropped your bow in the water, it would be damn well worth it. You know, in a second here, you'll see that green light come on the trolling motor. That lets me know that the uh, prop is turning. I wired that in myself by taking off the cover and finding out where the hot wires are when the uh, current comes on. The bow I'm using tonight is my favorite, G-Rex, set at 3 pounds and 27 inches of draw. I typically hunt with anything from a 29 and a half inch to 30 inch bow. I shoot with a bow that is obviously 2.5 to 3 inches shorter. Uh, there's many reasons, but most importantly, not you know, you're not trying to kill a deer here, you're trying to get an arrow to stick into a fish. And uh, with the depth of water that I'm shooting everything right now, this 30 pounds out of this particular bow is more than enough to comfortably set an arrow in a fish.
you know what? Another benefit to keeping your power stroke uh, down or keeping your draw length down is to cut down, again, over penetration. Shooting through the fish, getting it stuck in the bottom. And weeds like these with these heavy roots, they're difficult to pull the arrows out. So, you know, you might not hit your fish every time. You might miss. You might hit the fish, then pass through and get stuck in the bottom. Uh, shooting a 45, 50 pound bow in such kind of conditions is going to be more time consuming. You're going to spend more time trying to pull that arrow out of the bottom. this night I did manage to shoot a few. I ended up getting uh, five goldfish and, uh, on the left side of the camera uh, over here you, there was another one that went by. Uh, it was a nice night. I was pretty excited about it. You know, I don't know what it seems to be, but sometimes there's nights where the fish seem to fight more. Uh, in this night, it uh, seemed to be that all the fish that I shot were all fighters. And this one here was probably the fight of the night. This thing did not know how to stop. It was just going to go, 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 go. And it did. It uh, wasn't that particularly big of a fish, but boy, it had a lot of fight in its heart. Less than a week ago, uh, over to my right in this image, uh, there was some long-nosed gar spawning. And there had to be close to a hundred of them uh, within maybe a, a 40 foot stretch. They were just packed in there, you know, hovering and sort of uh, just congregating. And all this algae has popped up in uh, basically the last five days. So that shot right there was a nick, uh, sort of a wounding shot. The fish comes uh, swimming out to my left here, comes out from underneath the boat, you can see the scar still in it, and I whack it the second time. So I figured he, uh, he had his chance, he had his warning shot, didn't listen. You know, I, any trip that I am out on the water for more than an hour, another goldfish over there, damn it. Uh, you know, standing on these uh, rubber mats uh, makes things so much easier. Um, they're only $20. Um, they have like a honeycomb style design to them. They're three foot by three foot, and uh, they're available at Menards.
you know, this was the night that I noticed my uh, drag had really loosened up, and I knew my plates were aligned properly. And uh, after contacting me, fine folks over at uh, Mega Mouth, uh, they gave me a uh, uh, an idea to try about removing the drag adjustment knob and then rotating it to the left and pushing it back on. Uh, this worked out extremely well. I went from having nine pounds of drag at maximum to about 45 pounds of drag at uh, just a little bit better than halfway. Uh, I did a little video of that and that is available uh, uh, here on YouTube as well. I came up with this water pump system and uh, I've tried several different things and I just re-redid it again just after this video using a different type of siphon hose. But the bottom line is I'm using a, uh, a water pump, uh, something from I think it's called SureFlow. I'm using a small bladder tank, which is usually also called a, uh, 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 an overflow or pressure tank, uh, hot water pressure tank, relief tank, something like that lines. They're, they're for non-potable water, I believe it is, they're pretty inexpensive, about $25. The pump itself though, you're gonna spend probably closer to 50 bucks to get yourself a nice one. And I'm also using a uh, one of those expanding hoses. It also acts as like a little bit of a bladder. It creates better pressure. This here, you can see where I was losing pressure time in and time out. And it was because my siphon hose uh, was just the wrong type. And it kept on leaking and getting air in. Uh, there's an example there why I can just pick up those mats, throw them to the back, and rinse out underneath them. Uh, and again, I haven't used other products that you permanently mount down. Um, I like the flexibility of this, where I can take it off and on, and then uh, replace it. Leave it off underneath them pretty simply. Anyways, guys, I hope you have a damn good day, or at least try like hell, and uh, enjoy your time out there. You know, hopefully 2020 is your best season so far. Stay safe, and uh, enjoy your life.